In this chapter, we will have look on Theo Grass tool. Before we will start to watch this chapter, be sure that you've seen Insidium's Theo video tutorials, where it's very well and in details explained all Theo Grass sections, basic workflow, technicalities, and parameters as well. So it doesn't make sense to explain it again, and I can show you my workflow with this tool instead. For this chapter, I'm using ACES Color Space and Redshift. As first step, I have to go to the Insidio menu, Theo section, and here I will use to grass tool. As next step, I need object where I would like to scatter grass. So as example, I will use plane. Now I can see how looks result. By default, first layer of grass is spline object type. But in my case, for grass scattering, I'm using polygon object type instead. As next step, I will assign base redshift material with how textures into the first grass layer. For better looking result, I have to create material and grass shape variations. So I will create another grass layer. As you can see now, I can control two grass layers separately. And with frequency parameter, I can control amount and balance between grass layers. As next step, I would like to break up grass uniformity, so I will use noise shader. It's similar workflow as I explained already in scattering chapters. Noise contribution helps with better looking results. As next step, I would like to have more visible variations. So I will use different blade width, height and amount of variation for each layer. Blade shape depends on sprite texture, which I would like to use later. But remember that this feature is very powerful. It allows you to have full control over procedural blades. So you are able to control simple or more complex blade shape without complicating modeling tools. Amount of turbulence or bend I'm changing later after texturing. But remember that this tool strongly helps with variations or if you need more detailed looking blades. But more segments or details affecting computer performance, so increase these parameters on the end of the look dev process and never on the beginning. Very often I'm using for scattering two different Theo Grass instances. It helps with better integration with terrain and also it allows me to use different noise for better density and length blending. So as example, if I will use different color for this layer, and again, I will assign object, and I will change layer type to polygons, as you can see, I have another layer of grass blades. So as next step, I will change amount of blades, and I will use noise shader for better integration. Different noise scale, noise type, or grading, produce different looking grass clusters than we have in previous layers. So as next step, I will change blade size, height or shape. And as you can see, it produced better looking result than before. Also on the end of the look dev process, I can increase or decrease amount of grass blades exactly as I need. The most important for good looking grass are textures. In my case, I prefer to use scan based textures such as mega scans. But of course, you can use any other textures which you like as well. Another reason why I prefer mega scans assets is their bridge functionality. All textures are automatically exported and ready to use with Redshift just with one click. Important is to find textures with alpha channel. This alpha channel I'm using for sprite shader. So I can use low poly geometry where grass shape details are defined by alpha channel. It's a very efficient workflow. As you can see, materials exported from Megascans bridge automatically contains all texture connections, 
include transparency texture and sprite shader with alpha channel as well. So you do not need to spend time with connecting textures into the RS materials. As next step, I will clean up my scene and I will assign material with textures to each grass layer. For better and cleaner visibility, use RL light or any other physical light, especially if you are working in AC's color space. It's just temporary lighting, but it helps with texturing process. Also, I will use for terrain material, which helps with better grass visibility or with separation from terrain. For texturing process, I am recommending to use low density of blades. Also zoom in as you need to be sure that you are able correctly work with UV mapping. Lower amount of turbulence or bending if you are not able to see correct result. As you can see, I am using texture which contains multiple grass blades. So I have to properly wrap texture onto the blades. If you would like to avoid this process, separate variations and prepare correctly your textures in Photoshop. Remember the Theo Grass tool. First applying UV mapping and after that deformations onto the blades. So you do not need to be worried about remapping textures every time when you decide to use different amount of bending or turbulence. Also, if you need, you can increase blade segments for smoother looking shape. But first check out how looks your result in proper camera zoom. Because mostly for grass scattering, you do not need too many segments. And as you can see, it will work properly. Repeat this workflow for every single grass layer. Spend enough time with proper texturing and mapping because it will strongly affect your final result. Once you are done with UV mapping and all grass layers contains proper textures, as you can see it produces interesting looking details, even we are using just low poly geometry. And it's because grass shape is defined now by alpha channel from sprite shader. For better integration and blending between grass layers, use color correct node. Color brightness, hue or saturation are very helpful. For grass is also very important transluency effect. How to achieve visible transluency and how to work with transluency textures, I will show you in different chapter later. If you are working with huge amount of grass blades, for better computer performance, you do not need to see all details in Redshift Render View and in 3D Viewport as well. And in this case, you can use in 3D Viewport just box representation of scattered objects. Also, for better looking result, don't forget to use proper terrain textures and never use just base straight plane. Because as you can see, terrain with displacement provides more natural looking result. Also remember that experimenting with noise and shader effect can inspire you or that it very often helps with better looking results as well. And here is comparison how different modes of shader effect produce different looking results. In terms of performance, as you can see, if you will do all steps properly, Theo tool provides a very solid response in Redshift Render View. Another important factor for better looking result is lighting. Here is comparison how lighting strongly affects the result. As you can see, lighting and shadows can produce good or bad looking result. How to use physical sun or graded HDRI maps for scenes, I explained already in 3D landscape lighting chapter. Also remember that light blockers or light maps are very important for natural looking result. 
So check out Lighting Techniques chapters where you will find more details on how it works. Another step how to achieve better looking result is to use additional assets. As you can see, these assets are properly integrated with grass and terrain. And that's because Theo grass is able to avoid these objects, so scene doesn't contain any weird looking intersections. And on the end of this chapter, I will tell you some quick tips. Remember that this is just first release of Insidious Theo tool. So some integration with Redshift or C4D tools are not working perfectly yet. But I am pretty sure that it will be soon. And in this case, as example, if sometimes you are not able to see proper grass scattering over the terrain which contains displacer modifier, just use connect objects function and use connected terrain instead. As another example, as I mentioned already, you can use cloner to scatter additional objects onto the terrain as well. And Theogras is able to detect these objects and avoid them. But for now, this works only if you are using cloner with instance mode. Also remember that sometimes when you are working with complex grass textures or if you are using too large grass density, there is possibility that you will need to restart render view. But it's mostly only in case when you are not able to see correct result. Theogras is a very useful tool and you can use it for many purposes. As example, here is Megascan's asset. It's scan-based asset. And if I will scatter Theogras on this asset, as you can see, it produces more interesting looking result. As I mentioned already, correct lighting helps with better integration or grass visibility. Also remember that for more realistic result, you can use generation section. Here you can define height and slope range. These ranges always helps with more natural looking result. So as you can see Theo grass has huge potential and you are able to create custom looking grass exactly as you need. In the next chapter we will have a look on Theo plants.